Let's spend a little time talking about the concept of critical reading, also known as active reading. While this topic isn't directly related to library research, it definitely impacts how you interact with what you find using the library. Some introductory English classes may talk about strategies to help you read critically, but not all. Most professors just assume that you already know how to read for research or that you'll figure it out. But a lot of us never really get the hang of reading textbooks, journal articles, theses, dissertations, and other academic sources. So let's spend a little time talking about it. My very first class in library school had a textbook titled How to Read a Book. I thought this was hilarious. I mean, I was going into librarianship because I already loved reading. What else was there to know? But this book really opened my eyes when it comes to reading critically, especially nonfiction and works that are difficult to understand. It's not always as straightforward as it seems. I think we can all agree that you don't read Twitter the same way you read a cookbook, and you don't read your email in the same way you read an instruction manual. I know this sounds sort of dense, but I think it needs to be said. Sure, you read them all, but not in the same way, because these are totally different types of reading material. Why do so many students, and even professors, think that they should read dense academic texts in the same way that you read a fiction novel? They aren't anything alike. You're just setting yourself up for failure, and nobody wants that. I don't know about you, but when I read a fun fiction book, I'm alert and interested in seeing what happens next. But with many textbooks and academic journal articles, it's hard to keep your eyes open, much less actually digest any of the content. So what can we do to survive and even thrive while dealing with academic writing? Never fear, there are solutions. First, forget what you know about reading if all you think you need to do is sit there and take it in. That's way too passive. The first step to being successful in surviving academic texts is to be an active reader. This person may have gone a little overboard, but you can see that they were really engaged with the text. It's hard to sleep when you're that busy writing. Now this is an example of an article that I marked up. This article is about communicating the risks of various common health screenings, and it talks a lot about statistics, not my strong area. But I really want to understand this, so I read it and made comments as I was reading. I listed what I was still confused about, what I didn't agree with, and what I liked. Do you do this already? Well then congratulations, you're an active reader. If not, give it a shot. You don't need to do it with everything you read, mainly just with the stuff that you struggle with. Like if you made it all the way to the end of a chapter or an article and still had no idea what you just read, then it might be time to go back and try some active reading. I really don't get something unless I see the same information from about three or four different sources. So in those areas where I get really stuck, I'll make a note to find more information elsewhere, maybe even a video on YouTube. This goes along with active reading. Try and have a conversation with the author. Silly, yes, but if you think about it for a second, it kind of makes sense. The author is telling you something. You have the option to passively accept what they're saying, just listen in other words, or you can stop and ask questions, interrupt, ask for clarification, and so on. I do this all the time. Usually it's to say, that doesn't make any sense, or can't you say that a little more clearly? But at least I'm actively participating in the reading process. Now, in most cases, this isn't an actual conversation, duh. It's you taking notes or outlining, highlighting, thinking out loud, questioning, and so on. Generally, when you're reading an academic source, whether it's a book or an article, you have a purpose. It's not just for entertainment. Are you looking for a specific piece of data for a paper you're writing? Are you trying to figure out what treatment is the best or the safest? Keep your purpose in mind when you're reading. Being goal-oriented while wading through a difficult text is a good thing. A lot of what I read is used in my instruction, so I tend to look for good ideas or new ways to present information that may make these concepts easier to learn. So that's the purpose that I keep in mind when I read stuff. With a fiction book, it wouldn't make a lot of sense if you skimmed one part and then read another part in depth, or if you started reading it towards the end. And with most typical reading, you read it once and you're good. Throw both of these ideas out for academic reading. First, just one reading is rarely going to cut it when it comes to academic materials. 
Partly this is because so many authors in this area could not write clearly and concisely to save their lives. Another reason for rereading is that a lot of this content will be new and possibly confusing. Reading it again actively this time may really help solidify the concepts. You also don't read academic works from cover to cover. This isn't super surprising for textbooks. Most of you know what you're looking for when you pick up an academic book. You just look in the table of contents and get the chapter or chapters that you need. But you can do the same thing with journal articles as well. One of the most important things I will tell you this entire semester is that you do not read a science or medical article in order. You don't need to read every word, and you don't read for 100% comprehension. I know, it sounds wrong to even say that out loud, but this one bit of advice is going to save you tons of frustration. Most academic journal articles, especially those published in the health sciences, follow the same format, better known as the I'm RAD acronym. Here's what you should find in each section. The introduction talks about why a study was done. The methods will list the details of how the research was conducted. The results section is where the authors list what they found, generally in scary tables and statistics. And the discussion should be an overview of the study and what the authors think it means in a larger context. That last slide was just an overview of each of the sections you'll see in most science or biomedical articles. But it's really helpful to know what to look for in each section of these papers. It can help you keep on task and focused. When you read the introduction, you're trying to find out what does the author or authors know about this topic already, and what's their focus. When you read the methods section, try to answer the following three questions. Who are the participants and what makes them unique? Is it a good sample of the population? And is it a qualitative, quantitative, or mixed method research study? In the results section, try to get a feel for what the study found. This section usually has complicated tables and figures. It's okay, you don't have to understand every piece of data. Finally, in the discussion section, what were the author's findings and why are they important? Are there any stated limitations to the study and any suggestions for future research? I almost never read a journal article, especially one in the health sciences, directly from beginning to end. I start off with the abstract to get a feel for the whole paper. Then I read the introduction. I skip up over all the middle stuff and read the discussion. Only then do I go back to look at the methods and results. I find that reading everything else before I try to get through the tables, statistics, charts, and all that scary stuff helps me at least get an idea of what it means. And don't worry if you don't understand everything, especially the method and results section. Skim the article to pick up the important information and repeat to yourself. I can do this because I'm rad. One last technique that I'll share that can really help you with difficult journal articles, especially in health sciences, is something called appraisal checklists. These list, step by step, what you should be looking for in each section of the article. It's like having someone hold your hand and gently guide you through the process. Those of you going into nursing will be using these soon if you're not already. My favorite checklists come from a group out of England called the Critical Appraisal Skills Program, or CASP for short. But there are a lot of other checklists out there. Just Google Critical Appraisal Checklists and find one that works for you. So why is it important for a librarian to talk about active reading? Well, it's pointless to help you find information if you can't make use of it. So don't forget to actively read. Mark that text up and read in a way that allows you to gain the most comprehension. If you like to sit down and read the article or chapter in one sitting, that's great. If you take more in by breaking your readings into 15-minute segments, that's okay too. Finally, remember the standard way that most science and medical articles are laid out and make that work for you.